Well, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining for another video from me, Scarender. So, right, today I'm actually decided to talk about something that I've been actually working on for some time, but never really got around to do it. And that is a different type of Pokemon strategies you can find in battles. Uh, these types of uh, strategies or basic plays are very common. Uh, I counted to at least seven of them that being very, very common. Um, there are more, but these are the ones that you're basically going up against, and there are like, combinations of them too, obviously. But, um, I'm going to mention, you know, the pros and cons, why they work, and which types of players that you basically have it. I'm going to mention famous pocket tubers too, because a lot of these guys have perfected this type of strategy. Uh, so if you want to know how to play with these strategies, you should definitely check out these guys, because they're doing it so well. And also worth mentioning is that... Even though you know their cons, uh, you don't automatically win because many good players have uh, tried to, uh, you know, cover up their own weaknesses. And uh, like I said, check these guys out because they're doing that so well because there are battles where they fall short and still manage to turn things around because they know exactly what they have to do to make things work. Uh, other than that, guys, um, I'm going to mention uh, a little of my own playstyles too in this video so you might find out how I'm thinking in battle. Um, but you know what, You're I know exactly which type of player that you're probably the most accustomed to, and that is pretty much the noob setup, I guess we call it. Uh, and that is going to be the Staller set. Uh, so let's start with that. And by noob, I should briefly, I think I should elaborate on that one. I mean that that is usually, stall teams are usually the first professional teams that new players build. They are great to use against sweepers, you know, getting the momentum and stop really much uh, aggressive players from sweeping their teams. This is usually like the best cover against the players that use you know, only Ubers and are pretty much new to the game. Uh, a stall team is usually based on one sweeper, one defensive core, one special defensive core, uh, and this one can be different. Two defensive or specially defensive setup pokes or uh, force hitters, and one supporter. The supporter usually be in either with heal bell, wish, uh, can also use toxic spikes and screens. Uh, so what are the premise, what are the perks and cons about a stall player? Well, first off, um, they can stay around for a long time. That is, that they are, can be around for 40 turns. Stall players can usually wear down sweepers really, really well, have great functions in that. The only con, really, is that they will need the whole team to work. That is, that they need the blockers. Uh, the sweeper must move freely in that team, which means that when it has to switch out, it has to switch out to something that can pretty much uh, soak the damage. So when it starts losing posts, it's the way this team falls apart. Uh, this team needs to be around for many, many turns, so that means that they are usually doing their very best to not lose any pokes. And, you know, after 30 turns, it's usually when the teams are falling apart. This is when the stall teams actually becomes greater and stronger. So, yeah, what is the direct counter for a so-called stall team? Well, uh, it is the tricks the team, really. But before we go into that, I'm actually going to mention a guy that have perfected the stall teams, and that is... The Pimp Knight, actually, or Ben the Pimp Knight. Uh, make sure to check out his battles. He is very, very, like, usually using Evil Light and stall teams. But it works in his favor because he's so good and seeing what the team is up against. So he has switched up things, but usually having a good defensive core is a blast watching him because he is very good at pinpointing threats. So yeah, though, like I said, the Trickster is a direct counter for this type of team. What is and the Trickster player is basically, just to be real honest there, what you become when you pretty much are tired of uh, opponents using stall teams against you. The one that perfected this is actually Done Deal. Um, make sure to check him out. I'm going to talk a little bit about him because this type of set uh, you don't see it in the professional so much anymore. Uh, but you know, if you check him out, you're gonna understand why it works so effectively. Uh, he usually actually um, forfeits against like, stall teams because he don't want to use his team like that. Um, a Trickster team is usually based on two supporters, two defensive cores. Uh, one sweeper and one defensive or special defensive sweeper and they're built as a stall team that is that they can stay around for 40 plus turns uh, without any problem at all they usually just scout 
uh, they want to know what opponent is up against or what they want to do. So usually it makes actually the opponent make all the mistake in revealing everything that it has planned out for it and can pretty much just pinpoint poke by poke and take them out. They usually uh, trap pokes, you know, in a way where it's blocking and, you know, can use toxic or can set up easy or even, you know, thunder waving. Very, very impressive display really because it is all about predicting what the opponents are going to do. Uh, so while this team is very, very, very hard hitting um, and usually never fast, never have to be fast, can usually rely on Aqua Jet and Mock Punch priority moves for the quick hit. But other than that, I mean, this is a great way to start off if you want to deal with stall um, teams. And the only like con in this team is actually that it falls apart um, when um, it's being predicted late game. Uh, but other than that, it is actually very, very well built and can stay around for a really, really long time. Like I said, prediction is its hardest counterpart here. And that is why we're going to talk about something called the Predictor. And I do know that most of you guys know about these types of players. They are the toughest players to go up against, in my opinion. Uh, they are usually the ones that, you know, having all the predictions down. Very, very hard hitting. Use pokes that are have a broad move pool to can counter whatever comes in, really. Uh, great at force switching. That is that even though the opponent are feel free to switch out, uh, they can usually switch out with them to get an even better position. Uh, Phoenix Master 1, uh, no, I think most of you guys know him, he is a champ at this. Definitely, definitely, if you want to know how to predict better in gaming, check him out. He usually have the thought process on what's going to happen, what he needs to do. Um, prediction teams are usually very, very built on one defensive sweeper two defensive cores and three defensive sweepers. Uh, the reason why they don't have any supporters is because usually they actually get the chance to predict whatever is gonna happen and rarely needs to um, <laughs> have a supporter in their team. Uh, usually they get the easy lead, that is that they can usually you know, take out players easily. So teams that are built around the, um, having around the six pokes are gonna have a rough time against these guy top guys. They have a good momentum, that is that they hit hard, they rarely need to hit out <laughs> or hit um, <sighs> and getting good momentum that is that when they force the opponent to switch they usually hit hard and they can actually switch around so well that it can soak damage and um, they are usually though their own worst enemy that is that when they do a misprediction uh, it can make them lose a poke they are not needing their all pokes a team that can actually you know doing just fine with only three pokes too because they are actually having that broad move pool. So these type of players are actually the best one on both Showdown and on VGC because they are actually very good at pinpointing what they must do against each team member. And yeah, that is actually the only thing that works against them. They have a hard time against um, opponents that have duelist types capabilities. And a duelist player is a player that doesn't follow the basic rules really, pretty much. So what is a duelist player? Well, it's a type of player that doesn't, like I said, follow the basic rules. That means that they're using, like, a physical sweeper can be a defensive core, or even, you know, the defensive cores can be the sweeper. Or, you know, a good example for just saying it is, think about Swallow, for example. Swallow using Boom Burst. That is uh, what a duelist does. It tried to use the same type of basic strategies, but with different pokes that aren't supposed to use it. Uh, a duelist player usually have one defensive supporters, uh, one tendency supporter, that is that is usually like boosting only, uh, two sweepers and two defensive core sweepers. Uh, so they are a great mixture really. Uh, they are good at uh, pinpointing threats and which threat does what actually. Um, and are very good at uh, focusing more on neutral damage than super effective damage. That is that when they force switch in that they can, um, you know, instead of trying to go for a super effective move, they'll try to go for neutral just to do as much damage as possible. Um, their builds are made so they can do uh, a lot of mistakes on their team. That means that they don't really need to worry too much about uh, the opponent uh, getting the upper hand because the opponent 
usually doesn't know what type of uh, attack does how much because these players are, well, just too hard to deal with. I actually found out lately that I am actually one of those players, or I play a lot like this, and I actually realized that uh, Exynon or Alec uh, is playing like this too. That is that we're both relying on the element of surprise and get great momentum from it. The way that is worth mentioning that is the cons for this type of plays are that this team needs momentum uh, to work. That is the opponent can't really know exactly what it up against because then it will actually find a great way to counter it. And other than that, and I can't really stress this enough, is that you can't fight for too many turns because when it goes against 25, 30 plus turns, it starts to fall apart and that is that the opponent knows exactly what it up against and um, well, the cores that are defensive aren't really that great. Uh, they usually only works because the opponent doesn't know about it, uh, but it's actually falling apart late game. But other than that, it's a great way to finding out how to counterpart predictors, because it is such a great way to go up against predictors with this type of team, because the predictors are so like narrow-minded when it comes to the predictions play, that they usually get to become their worst own enemy because of it. But these type of um, team has a huge problem against the underdog team, and what is the underdog team, you ask? Well, let's actually find out here. So while a predictor team and a duelist team is more based on the individual pre performance of one Pokémon, the underdog team is actually the team that is... I'm not gonna say it is the greatest type of team, but I actually realized later here that it's probably the team that, you know, work around the most of the usual, like, advanced plays, because it can stay around for such a long time. Uh, one great guy that does this is both Frank um, or Frank Trode and uh, also Shady Penguin. But I do believe Frank Trode is doing this much better uh, because he's definitely relying on, on being the underdog while Shady Penguin had developed to you know being able to do even more than that. But what is an underdog team? Well, it is basically two sweepers, two defensive, special defensive uh, sweepers one defensive course and one supporter and how does these guys really work well they have a really really planned out team that is very good at holding the team together really losing pokes um, they are luring the opponents to uh, bring them to a false safety that pretty much means that they can put an opponent to pretty much sack a poke because they think uh, that they are in a good position when they're not uh, so that's why these guys are so tough to deal with and they are a great counter for duelist players because duelist player can easily sack a poke when they think they've done its job and well then they just show oh I got rest talk boom bitch done I hate these types of players they are so good and they are so well thought out their teams I love them and hate them at the same time um, the only bad thing about these are that they have a very bad sack play function that is that they really need like a stall team to have their whole team working and that's why they're supporting each other and uh, like I said their their greatest like weaknesses are the guardian players and what is a guardian player well let's find out here the guardian player like the underdog player is pretty much based on being super 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 defensive they usually usually using two defensive sweepers two defensive special defensive cores and one supporter the thing that they play that could go against the underdog team is that they have the same type of premise but are built to last much longer and instead of actually being able to sweep they are being able to wall whatever is trying to sweep them. They usually never lie on toxic or anything like that but rather wearing down a team to get them late game sweep. It should be mentioned they always have to have a late game sweep, they can never go around to do an easy sweep in the beginning. So how are these type of players based on while it comes to attacking? Well, like I said there, they have a very very deep defensive core play. That means that they really need to wear down the threats that can easily counter them. Usually there is nothing to counter uh, besides sweeper. So they're having a... how to put it? They have a lo lot of trouble against prolonged physical pressure. But if you don't have that type of pressure on it, you can actually stay, stay around for 40 to 60 turns. So this is actually the team that are made more than a stall team, you know, being prolonged in battle. Um, take for example Hulam Scrafty or Callum. Um, he is 
very very good at this type of plays. He usually brings a sweeper nowadays, but he's still doing this, and it's amazing display to watch. He pretty much have a great way of predicting the safest switching. That is that he is just out to soak damage. He doesn't care to sweep in the beginning. He roll the scout out, and he's doing this great. Like I said here, this type of team has a lot of trouble against physical pressures. And that is going to be that set that I think most of you guys know. And that is going to be what I choose to call the hyper offensive teams. You know Leo Dan or Six Hacks? This is his turf. He's doing this really, really well. What is a hyper offensive premise team? Well, they are usually bringing two sweepers, so it's not that like. Um, offensively like deep but the thing is that has four defensive special defensive sweepers can we mix around however he wants the thing is he usually never rely on setups um, just having the physical pressure on and on no matter how much they switch in uh, the two sweepers are usually really really fast or out for blood every time they're in uh, a great example is um, uh, scar of terra cross it's probably that turf in cure in black yeah no doubt about it actually and other than that, just have it said, the defensive sweepers are just to be in somewhat slow, can do little support things, and basically they are just out for hitting hard directly after. So yeah, like I said, they're easily trying to overpower their opponent, uh, forcing them to switch out, getting high damage. The only thing that is intuitive and very very like counteractive is that this type of team needs momentum, it needs to have the hit and run capabilities. If they're going against a stall team, they're going to be walled, they're going to be a long fight, where since a hyper offensive uh, team is not built for staying more turns than 25 before it's actually falling apart, um, stall teams are under a counter, and which also means that we're going full circle here with different type of um, strategies. Um, worth noting though, hyper offensive teams are probably the most advanced team, that is that they are very hard to play with, and you really have to um, have the predictions game down and know which folks have wall what. So that is why it's always an impressive display to watch in this. So really if you want to uh, be able to play like this, I recommend you guys watching Six Hacks or Leo Dan because, like I said, this type of playstyle is the hardest because if you do a wrong prediction it is falling apart fast. But if you can have the momentum, you go in to win easily. This type of overpowering is so cool to watch. Uh, you know, it is intuitive with Talent Flame, sure, but it works so well and it's so cool watching. <laughs> yeah, so this really became a very, very lengthy video, and I'm really sorry for that because I did. If, if I actually wanted to do this video even longer, I actually like narrowed it down because the elaborations on these playstyles got to just so long. So if this is something that you could um, will want to see in the future, I actually do just one of these playstyles and elaborate on them instead of actually doing like all at the same time because I feel like it was somewhat um, <laughs> it feels like I stressed it out really and it was it wasn't supposed to be like that. Um, other than that, I do want to thank all the pocket tubers that uh, was fine with me using their names as an example. Uh, I hope they watch this; uh, it would be an honor really. So I want to thank Pip Knight, I want to thank Don Deal, uh, I want to thank Phoenix Master 1, Exxon 3120, Frank Trode, Shady Penguin, Callum Hoodscrafty, um, oh, and yeah, can't forget about you, Leo Dan, Six Hack. So for you guys who are watching this, I know that most of you guys know who these people are, and if you aren't, make sure to check them out. I mean, these guys have their own core play but you know these type of play styles they have pr pretty much perfected it and they have been able to work around it so often too so if you want to become a greater battler or just find out a different strategy check these guys out the reason I took him like while well, I'll watch uh, Frank Trout for example is because I know he's my direct counter I know the way he plays is the way I can't deal with that's why I've taken I've been so inspired by him really and yeah, it, just, it, it is a blast really. So if you know your playstyle, make sure to try to check out the players that I mentioned here. They're um, your counterparts, because you will learn a lot from watching them. So other than that guys, you know, thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. 
and I'll see you tomorrow with another battle. And as always, guys, thank you for watching, and have a good day. All right? Bye.